Hi, my name's Claire Mulligan and I'm one of the lead nurses here at RISE. We've put together a video for you, all about five ways to wellbeing and things that you can put in place to help yourself. You'll see numerous staff from within RISE that are going to talk to you about each area. Sit back and enjoy. Hi, my name is Anne and I'm an assistant psychologist. I'm going to introduce you to the first way to well-being, which is Connect, and how this can improve your overall mental health well-being. Connect is about building and strengthening the relationships with the people around you. As humans, we're very sociable species, so it's very important for us to connect with people so that we feel less isolated. Connecting can be done with friends, family, even your neighbours, whether it's at home, at school or in your local community. Building these relationships and these connections can support you in feeling better on a daily basis. Some examples of connect are spending meaningful time with people, going on a day out with your friends, joining clubs or even sports teams. I practice connect by meeting my friends on a regular basis. I speak to friends on the phone who live very far from me and also help my mum with the cooking. This is my way of connecting with my loved ones. It's also very important to connect with yourself and have those quiet moments. You can do this by spending time in nature, spending time with your pets or practicing your hobbies. I practice connecting with myself by going on long walks, drawing and doing my skincare routine. This is the best time for me to reflect and develop. So what can you do to practice connect? Talk to someone in person or on the phone rather than texting them. Speak to someone you've never spoken to before. Ask them how their day was and really pay attention to what they have to say. How can connecting benefit you? By giving yourself time with these relationships, you'll feel happier and more secure. This will also give you a better sense of purpose. It can also make a positive difference in how you feel and how you live your life. This can also improve your overall mental health well-being. Now I have some questions for you. What's the difference between connecting and just making contact? What can you do more of to connect better with people? And who would you like to connect with or reconnect with? Hello, uh, my name is Brian and I'm a mental health well-being practitioner. Uh, working with children and young people who experience um, various levels of anxiety and low mood. Um, one of the reasons why I'm kind of like doing this short video is to think about how we can reduce these anxieties and feelings of low mood through um, exercise and staying active. Um, over the years, I've kind of like um, engaged in exercise and done certain challenges, um, which I personally feel have a, made a massive difference to my own mental health. Um, and it, you know, kind of keep keeping you fit, uh, allowing you to focus on something else, something that you can enjoy um, on your own and also with other people. Um, so with research and what they say um, when we do exercise, um, as little or as much as you can during the day, it um, it releases certain chemicals, endorphins in in the brain, um, and kind of helps helps you think and feel differently um, after the activity and after the exercise. So, really, it's I suppose from from my point of view, it's about thinking about what exercises that you can do and thinking about how um, how you can set certain goals and realistic goals into actually building up um, to a, a certain level. So for example, I, I enjoy running, I enjoy cycling and I enjoy swimming. Um, two, two, about two and a half years ago, I was unable to swim. So I decided to set myself a goal and learn how to swim um, and which has kind of really benefited me um, physically 
um, as well as mentally. And it's also increased my um, social network, meeting other people, um, kind of joining in in certain events, which all adds to um, the feeling of well-being and just basically feeling good about oneself. All right, so what I'd say for anyone that is kind of experiencing certain difficulties um, or anxieties, it's about thinking, okay, these feelings that I'm having, maybe in my stomach or maybe um, kind of in my head, like getting headaches or race, you know, kind of a fast heart rate. Think about how how you can actually um, change that feeling. And the the most important thing, as well as as well as doing um, kind of like a, a running exercise, you can also go for a walk, um, set certain challenges, uh, maybe speak to a friend, and you know, and kind of think about what you and your friend could do over a period of time um say over six months building it up so start walking a certain distance every day and then before you know it you'll be thinking about okay we've we've built up enough now and feel strong enough now to um think about maybe starting to do a little run and then find your local park or um, somewhere where you can kind of like build up a, a bit of a, a routine and a bit of a route um, just to just to kind of change change how things are going for you but I, I do honestly believe that if you if you start something very very small and recognize that it, it can be a little bit difficult at first but it's about the benefits it's about the benefits of um, when, when you've done that exercise, how you then feel and how it compares to when you may be struggling with certain things or if you're worrying about certain things, how different you feel. And that's the key. That's the idea, really. So I'm hoping that that was helpful. Um, this week is a real good week um, to kind of like focus on uh, mental health and positive mental health and feeling of well-being. Okay, well, good luck with your exercise. Bye. Hi, I'm Mishak, and I work as a support worker with Rise. Today, I want to talk to you about notice and how taking notice can be important for our well-being and mental health. So what is notice? Notice and taking notice is actively bringing our attention to the here and now. It's putting aside our past worries, putting aside our future worries. It's noticing how we feel right now, how our friends and family feel right now, and any other little things such as, what do we want? What do we feel we're missing? By doing this, we can pick up on little things we may normally miss in ourselves and in others in our busy day-to-day -day lives. By taking notice, you can appreciate moments for what they are, rather than worrying about the past or the future. You can bring attention to the present and make the most out of situations that you may not normally do, or you may take for granted sometimes. Taking notice can help us see how our friends and family around us are feeling, and it can allow us to be a better friend, a better family member and allow others around us to know how we're feeling and how to react to us. And it can allow us to find out a lot about ourselves and what we need and what we need to do for ourselves and what more we could do to make ourselves happier. So one way I try to promote notice in myself and in others is by running mindfulness sessions. So these sessions aim to ground and allow us to discover how we're feeling in the moment. And by doing this, we can notice what we feel like we're missing how we feel, if we're experiencing any emotions that we can't really explain or can't really describe or we may have never felt them before. And it can allow us to pick up on these and find a way to try and label them or explain them to others so they can help us out. And it also allows us to pick up on any emotions, feelings or anything else that we've been too busy to take notice of. So as well as mindfulness, there are a few other ways we can help take notice of ourselves and those around us. One way is by having a self-care day or evening. So this is just time spent doing anything that makes you happy. This can be playing games, watching your favourite film, having a bath, doing a skincare routine, playing music in your headphones, playing music out loud. What you do isn't important, but how it makes you feel is. So just doing something that you really enjoy, you really love, 
um, that really makes you happy is important and do it so you don't worry about what anyone else would say in it, how others would feel, just do it unapologetically. Another way to take notice is by finding someone close to you who will listen and just talk to them and you can talk about anything, it can be about your favourite film, it can be about how your day went but when talking to someone that really listens you'll find you automatically feel comfortable, you'll open up more and in doing this you'll naturally begin to discuss things you didn't even realise were on your mind and you'll find out a lot about yourself and you'll have someone there listening that's going to help you out and be able to give you advice and, and reciprocate your feelings. And as well as doing this to someone, be someone they can talk to, so do it back for them. Just listen, let them talk and listen and this will allow you to take notice of how they're feeling and also you might pick up on things that you didn't notice about them and you might feel similarly, so you might find out they're feeling a certain way and you might feel this way and you didn't know before hearing someone else explain it in their their own words and their own thoughts so these are just a few ways we can take notice and really taking notice of ourselves is very important it allows us to see ourselves in a different light and takes away all the day-to-day -day worries takes away all the the busyness busyness of the day and allows us to really get into who we are and why we feel the way we feel which is very important thank you for listening Hi everybody, my name is Chase and I'm a support worker within RISE. I am currently studying a master's degree which fills my head with lots of information and I'm constantly learning new things. Therefore, I'm going to speak to you about learning new skills. Um, as we know, mental health can be quite overwhelming. Um, and this is where learning new skills can really be effective and come into practice. According to research, learning new skills can boost your self-confidence and raise your self-esteem. It helps to build a sense of purpose and helps you to connect with others around you. Evidence also suggests that taking these steps towards improving your mental health can help you feel more positive and achieve the most out of your life. So me personally... A skill that I picked up, um, which was probably in lock, I think it was in lockdown due to the gym being closed, um, which was my main escape, um, was purchasing a hula hoop. Now, there's no chance that I looked at that hula hoop and thought, yeah, I can hula hoop. Um, so it took a while, took a very long time, but I eventually learned how to do it. And now it's a great skill because my mind knows exactly how to do it. As soon as I get the hula hoop out, my muscle memory remembers how to do it all. And that is a new skill that I picked up. Um, but skills can be as simple as trying out a new recipe that you've always wanted to try, that you feel like you've never really had the time to do it. You haven't had the time to dedicate to do it. You've had other priorities. Um, and it's kind of been neglected. Um, but in terms of when feeling overwhelmed and feeling maybe things are a bit too much, these skills are important. So cooking is a very good one, cooking and baking, um, whether you're a sweet or a savoury person, obviously vice versa. Um, learning how to cook new dishes, new recipes um, is, is very beneficial for you. Um, in addition to this, sports, I don't know if you'd class hula hooping as a sport, but um, whether it's school, just having an activities club after school of netball, football, it might be out of your comfort zone, but also a challenge is a good thing. Um, it keeps you learning, so it's good to push yourself out there and maybe put yourself out of your comfort zone and, and try something that is a little bit challenging that you wouldn't normally do, um, which then that rolls on to a hobby that, it could be a new hobby that you've always wanted to try. I know that crocheting is a really big thing at the moment. Um, I don't think I'd ever be able to do knitting, but crocheting, I know that a lot of young kids have really got into that and it's quite popular. Um, and it might just be an old skill that, you know, you've done in the past and, and you gave up because you found it hard. But it might be that, you know, you want to try and give that a go again. Um Another thing as well that we've started to use as a team are journals. So it might just be that you want to document your whole entire day or it might be that you want to use a self-care journal or a mindfulness journal and just use the day to reflect and record how everything's been and just have the opportunity to just look through it and glance through it and just 
get it all out of your head and down onto paper. That is learning a new skill, how to get it all out of here and onto physical paper in front of you. Um, and then other skills can include maybe some DIY work. So painting's quite therapeutic. If you've got a piece of furniture maybe in your bedroom that you don't like the colour of anymore, painting it a new colour, fixing something. I know I have a bike that's got two wheels that are maybe popped now. Fixing a bike probably won't go very well because I don't know how to do that. But it's just that learning how to challenge yourself and learning how to maybe do something that you probably wouldn't have done. Um, so yeah, so there are plenty of new skills that we probably all have that we probably neglect doing and could actually really mentally do with giving it a go. Another big one and a final big one is reading. Reading, I think it takes a certain point to realise what type of book you like. And reading is a really good skill to have and it really helps detach away from the day that you have had um, and any experiences that you've had throughout the day that might have been triggering. So reading is a really one to, good one to get into. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Tips from me. Thank you. And I'm a support worker in the RISE team. As part of our October's half term, we are doing a Rise and Shine Festival of five ways to well-being. And the one thing I'm going to talk to you today about is the power of giving. Now, if we think about giving as an acronym, I like to use the acronym of generosity is very encouraging. Now, you might think what generosity means. So generosity is about giving. It's about being there for others. It's about being kind and compassionate. Now, I really want you to think about ways that you can give to others. Now, I want to talk about things that I like to do. First and foremost, I think it's really important to give yourself a break. Give yourself that time. Give yourself ways to connect with yourself in order to be the best version of yourself. Because if we want to be there for others and if we want to give to others, we have to try and, in, and be in a good place. So first and foremost, I think it's important to give that time to you. Because let's be honest, it's been a tough year. It's been really hard for people. And, you know, everyone is, is in some way or another is, is suffering with their mental health. So it's really important that we're there for others. We're kind. We're compassionate. We don't blame and shame. You know, we encourage people to feel and do better. Because we don't know what anyone's going through. And it's really important to not be judgmental. So first of all, I think giving in terms of giving your time is so important because that's something you can never get back you know and I think if you can give your time to someone then you are really showing them that you're there for them and it's really important to be able to do that I personally like to give my time to my family and friends I like to be there for them I like to give them advice I'm always the shoulder to cry on if they need it um so for me giving means obviously being there for others it means doing things and going out of your way but making sure that you're 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 okay and not putting your own emotions and your own feelings aside but just being there for other people you can do that in any way you can go for a walk with someone you can go and see them for a cup of tea or coffee or go watch a film you know i like to go out and be with nature and, and give my time to people that i really care about so i really want you to think about how you can do that and how you can give and moving forward because you know like i said before time is precious and we won't ever get that back and i think it's really important to be able to do things for others as well as look after yourself give yourself that time give others that time um and really be there for one another because you know life is hard and it's tough for for everyone really and everyone's going through their own pain and I think it's really important to be able to look past that, not judge anyone and say, actually, this is how I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to give you a bit of me and hopefully that will help you to feel better and be better. So, yeah, I think hopefully you have taken from this like things that you can do to obviously help others um, by giving you your your time to them. You know, and I think it's really encouraging that we try our best to be there for others by giving. So I hope that um, helped and I hope you are well in your journey and that you obviously take something from this video where you can think actually I might give some more time to my parents or give some time to my carer or my friends or my neighbour for instance because they're alone and they don't have anyone or I might give some time to that person that's just sat there alone 
why not just have a conversation? Why not just spark a conversation and it, it might be really rewarding? You know, give some time to your schoolwork because you want to see where it takes you. You know, you have a career path where you might want to be. It might be give some time to your body, you know, make time to feel better and do better things by eating healthy and, and being fit and going to the gym or, or going for a walk, whatever it might be. But there's so many different ways that we can give. And I think it's really important to be able to give your time to others first and foremost um, as a way of showing them that you're really there for them. And please be kind, you know, because there's, the, we're, in a, we're in, a, in a tough world, you know, and it, it, it's hard to fit in sometimes. But your u uniqueness is key. And if you never change who you are and always stay true to who you are, but remain positive and give your time to others, but more importantly, give it to yourself. And I hope that was informative for you and I hope that you take something from it and take care. Bye. Hi, my name is Eve and I'm an assistant psychologist in RISE. I'm here to tell you about helplines and websites with useful resources. So if you are feeling particularly worried or stressed or even bored, you can go on our website cwrise.com and you can find plenty of information about mental health problems or advice on how to look after yourself. If you are experiencing a mental health crisis at the moment and you are under 17, don't hesitate to contact our RISE crisis team on the number 08081 this service is available 24 hours a day and it's 7 days a week. And there are other helplines you can try too. You can call your local NHS mental health helpline or you can go on the MIND website. They offer an info line on 0300-123-3393 or you can try the child line on 0800-1111 or you can call the Samaritans for a range of difficulties such as depression or suicidal thoughts or when you're feeling low you can call on 116123 and their helpline is open 24 7. If you prefer texting you can go on the Young Minds Crisis Messenger it's a free and confidential 24 7 support or you can try the Kuth website they offer a range of features and tools to support you. So you can message the Kuth team or have a live chat with them, but you can also find a magazine with help helpful articles or you can start or join a discussion with the Kuth community. Or you can write in your own daily journal to track your emotions and reflect on how you're doing. Or you can try the mini activity hub and it has a menu of fun, therapeutic and useful activities. My favorite one is dance like no one is watching you. Uh, finally, I would like to recommend a book that I have found very useful. It's called The Kindness Workbook and it offers creative and compassionate ways uh, to boost your well-being. The authors are Elaine Beaumont and Mary Walford. I hope this information was useful. Goodbye. Thank you for taking your time to watch through this video. We hope you found it helpful and learning more about the five ways to well-being. Take care of yourself. Bye.